Hello. Well, today, on September 5th, I'd like to start out singing about that word that you don't want to hear. Most people do not want to hear. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, and Mel to wait, to wait, and wait, and wait a little longer. Good morning, Miss Elizabeth and Connie. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, Miss Dina. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach us, Lord, well, teach us, Lord, to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and maybe just a tiny bit longer. Miss Luann and Donna, just a little bit longer. Because it says they shall run and not be weary. You see, when you wait, there's better preparation, isn't there? You see all the details. God reveals some things you didn't see right at first. And you go, oh, okay. I need to adjust this little thing over here. Uh, I think I would have greater victory if I kind of added this little thing over here, right? Ah, there is great rewards in waiting. Tough as it is. Well, we aren't going to wait any longer to get into the Word of God. All of you, Miss Donna. Miss Elizabeth, such wonderful, wonderful brothers and sisters of the Lord coming to hear his word. Miss Yolinda, just as faithful as can be. Miss Yolinda always goes and sees Kathy's graphics. She is a wonderful one of encouragement for Kathy. So I hope all the rest of you will just take a minute and scroll through. Something will jump out at you and kind of add, kind of add to the understanding of what you heard. So let's read our Bible every day out loud, right? Mm, Jane, you did a very good job on that coffee today. All right, on this September 5th, we will be reading from Ecclesiastes 10, and my goodness, it starts off with just a jolt, a blast. Are you ready? Are you ready? Dead flies. <laughs> First word out of her mouth. Dead flies putrefy the perfumer's ointment. Now, King Shlomo must have been passing down by there, and he noticed that, and, it, and out came a parable, right? Out came a parable. Dead flies putrefy the perfumer's perfumer's ointment and cause it to give off a foul or odor. Well, I guess so. So does a little folly, bad odor, to one respected for wisdom and honor. A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. Hmm. A lot of talk today about who's on the right and who's on the left. Even when a fool walks along the way, he lacks wisdom, and he shows everyone that he is a fool. If the spirit of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your post, for conciliation pacifies great offenses. Oh, yes. Just stay firm in your conviction. Even if the ruler rises against you, just don't leave. Just stand firm. 
There is an evil I have seen under the sun, says King Solomon, as an error proceeding from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity. Oh, my. Now, doesn't that become a hammer that hits on a nail? Folly is set in great dignity. While the rich sit in a lowly place, I have seen servants on horses while princes walk on the ground like servants. He who digs a pit will fall into it, and whoever breaks through a wall will be bitten by a serpent. He who quarries stones may be hurt by them, and he who splits wood may be endangered by it if the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge then he must use more strength but wisdom brings success oh you betcha get that axe sharpened so that it doesn't take too much of a swing to get the job done right a serpent may bite when it is not charmed the babbler the babbler is no different. Woo, boy, what a comparison that one is, right? Good morning, August. Hallelujah to the Lamb. August, we are in Ecclesiastes 10, verse 12. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool shall swallow him up. The words of his mouth begin with foolishness, and the end of his talk is raving madness. Wow, I think there's a little bit of raving madness around these days. A fool also multiplies words. A man knows what is to be. Who can tell him what will be after him? We don't know, do we? The labor of fools wearies them, for they do not even know how to go to the city. Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child, and your princes feast in the morning. Blessed are you, O land, when your king is the son of nobles, and your princes feast at the proper time for strength and not for drunkenness. They feast at a proper time for strength and not early morning drunkenness. Because of laziness, the building decays and through idleness of hands, the house leaks. A feast is made for laughter, and wine makes merry. But money answers everything. Do not curse the king, even in your thought. Do not curse the rich, even in your bedroom. For a bird of the air may carry your voice, and a bird in flight may tell the matter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Miss Kathy, hallelujah. Miss Kathy, you don't ever have to apologize to any of us for anything. Sweet sister, just come on when it happens. All right, we move right along to chapter 11 of Ecclesiastes. Cast your bread upon the waters. Let me cast this on the water for you will find it after many days, giving a, give a serving to seven and also to eight, for you do not know what evil will be on the earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it shall be. Better calculate, huh? Better calculate that mark where that ax is going to hit because after that tree falls, that's it. There it is. He who observes 
the wind will not sow. He'll always use it as an excuse, won't he? And he who regards the clouds will not reap. As you do not know what is the way of the wind or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. That one's pretty plain, isn't it? Good morning, Miss Sweet Maria. In the morning, you sow your seed, and in the evening, do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Truly, the light is sweet, and it is pleasant for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man lives many years and rejoices in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they will be many. All that is coming is vanity. King Solomon really loves that word, doesn't he? <laughs> and we need Scott to tell us the added meaning, perhaps, right, in the Hebrew. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. But I know that for all these, God will bring you into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. And we move along to chapter 12 of Ecclesiastes. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days come, and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are not darkened, and the clouds do not return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble, and the strong men bow down, when the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look through the window grow dim, when the doors are shut in the streets and the sound of grinding is low, when one rises up at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of music are brought low. Also, they are afraid of height and of terrors in the way. When the almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper is a burden and desire fails. For man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about the street. Remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher shattered at the fountain or the wheel broken at the well, and then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, all is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge Yes, he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find acceptable words. And what was written was upright, words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads, and the words of scholars are like well-driven nails 
given by one shepherd. And further, my son, be admonished by these. Of making many books there is no end, and much study is wearisome to the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Nothing escapes him, right? Good morning, Miss Melissa. Here she is with Kathy's graphics. Praise the Lord. We move right along to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. So we urged Titus that as he had begun, so he would also complete this grace in you as well. But as you abound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love for us. See that you abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but I am testing the sincerity of your love by the diligence of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor that you, through his poverty, might become rich. How about that? And in this, I give advice. It is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago, but now you also must complete the doing of it that as there was a readiness to desire it, so there also may be a completion out of what you have. For if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has and not according to what he does not have. For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but by an equality that now at this time your abundance may supply their lack, that their abundance also may supply your lack, that there may be equality. As it is written, he who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. Isn't that beautiful? The beauty of that is the freedom. They freely gave. They weren't compelled. They weren't intimidated to do it. They didn't do it to do more than the guy next to them. They just freely gave, and no one had any lack. Even those who gathered little, God caused it to to be enough. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's the difference between true freedom in Christ 
and socialism. All right, we move right along to Psalm 49, a psalm of the sons of Korah given to the chief musician, put it to a great tune. Oh, I am going to so enjoy heaven when I get there and hear what all the tunes are. Perhaps we will be amazed and say, oh, that's the same tune we sang. We'll see one day. Hear this, all peoples. Give ear, all inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall give understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb. I will disclose my dark saying on the harp. Why should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity at my heels surrounds me? Those who trust in their wealth and boast in the multitude of their riches. None of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him for the redemption of their souls is costly and it shall cease forever that he should continue to live eternally and not see the pit for he sees wise men die likewise the fool and the senseless person perish and leave their wealth to others their inner thought is that their houses will last forever their dwelling places to all generations they call their lands after their own names nevertheless man though in honor does not remain he is like the beasts that perish this is the way of those who are foolish and of their posterity who approve their sayings. Selah. Stop and meditate on that a moment. <clears throat> like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. The upright shall have dominion over them in the morning and their beauty shall be consumed in the grave far from their dwelling but god will redeem my soul from the power of the grave for he shall receive me selah meditate on that do not be afraid when one becomes rich when the glory of his house is increased, for when he dies, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Though while he lives, he blesses himself, for men will praise you when you do well for yourself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. A man who is in honor, yet does not understand, is like the beasts that perish. Wow. There's an awful lot to meditate upon here, isn't there? A lot. One reading just barely scratches the surface. Well, take in Kathy's graphics because they are wonderful on all of this and we wrap up this morning's reading y'all with proverbs 22 verses 20 and 21 proverbs 22 20 and 21 have i not written to you excellent things of counsels and knowledge that i may make you know the certainty of the words of truth that you may answer words of truth to those who send to you. Now that is really beautiful. Let's, let's just 
let's take that one in again. Have I not written to you excellent things of counsels and knowledge that I may make you know the certainty of the words of truth? That you may answer words of truth to those who send to you. Yes, we need to be prepared to give a word of answer, right? Hallelujah. All right, y'all. Tina says there's a sweet aroma that's coming from heaven this morning. Yes, we are a blessed people. Father God, thank you for the thoughts coming from the spirit of your sons and daughters, each and every one, those here right now and those who will view later. Father, we come before you with great thanksgiving for the sweet aroma that comes from you. <clears throat> you send it down. We can actually smell a sweet aroma of your presence. We can feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. We can be encouraged when everything around us or out there somewhere has a smell like the dead flies that ruined the perfume that we started out reading about, right? Ah, dead flies floating in something, putrefies it. And that's what false words do. False words, lies, hatred, putrefies even the atmosphere, even our DNA, if we'll let it, if we drink in, eat in that kind of stuff. Oh, Lord, we cry out to you this morning. We cry out to you. Send Holy Spirit at all times. Let Holy Spirit reside, live in our spirits to help guide to comfort, to cause us to let go of all of the earthly stuff and to dwell and walk every minute in the spirit, not according to the flesh, not according to putrefying smells and evil things before us. Cause our eyes and our ears to stay on you to stay on truth. We cry out to you, precious Father. We cry out, Jesus, as you intercede for us. We cry out, Lord, for your right hand of pure judgment to come. And we see it happening, but we cry out for more. We cry out for more, Lord. False judgments false judges and attorneys in high places have caused all that we see today, the falling away, the fact that they are not in this book, the whole reason we're here. See how much of the year has already gone? Precious Lord, we thank you that we are taking in all of your word for us. Lord, I'd ask you would stir up believers who know you, they love you, but they are not reading every day. They are not studying your word every day. Their Bible is sitting somewhere gathering dust. Oh, Father, please cause them, Lord, to suddenly have a hunger and a thirst for you. Cause your people in Israel to have more of a hunger and a thirst for not only you, but all of your word, all. We hold up Israel, Lord. We hold up Yerushalayim, your precious city, city on a hill, city on the sides of the north. 
Behold her up, Lord. She is precious in your sight. And you asked us to pray for her. And we are so privileged to do so. We pray for you, precious Jerusalem. We pray for you, Yerushalayim. We pray for you. We pray peace on your streets, Lord. We pray peace in your shops, Lord. Let them all be opened up. Let them receive you. Oh, Lord, please give Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, this son of your right hand, the meaning of his name, this son of your right hand. Lord, please give him your wisdom, your plan. Don't let him fall to the left or the right, but let him walk straight on boldly, knowing that you have him there and you will cause him to do all that you desire him to do in that office. Cause him to have great effect upon the Knesset and all the disagreements amongst them. Cause unity to come, Lord, that Israel might advance toward the preparation of the coming of Yeshua HaMashiach, their Lord and Savior. Lord, let the prayers at the wall be pure, pure. Let them pray your word. Let your sweet aroma be at that little western wall where they gather. Lord, I hold up America to you, and others are holding up other nations. Please hold them up. India, China, Russia, South America, North America, Australia, Europe, Europe, all of the countries of Europe. Lord, we'd ask that in this shaking that we see you doing of nations and people, the shaking of the sleeping part of the body of Christ. Oh, Lord, let Holy Ghost waken each and every one. Let them have eyes to see the end times unfolding very swiftly before our eyes today. Cause them, Lord, to see truth and not be deceived. Cause them, Lord, to seek your will, your ways, and to let it be measured by your word, not their opinion, not their selfish gain. But Lord, help us to just lay our lives down to you and pull out all the stops of following you and obeying you. We cry out, Lord, for angelic, protection all around President Trump and that administration. Cause them, Lord, to keep on seeking you. Cause there to be open Bibles and prayer in the White House and in all the other houses, in the private houses of all of Congress. Holy Ghost, please draw upon the hardened, hateful hearts on the left-hand side, as many as who would be drawn unto their Lord Jesus Christ. They are void. They are depraved in their minds and in their spirits. They are deadened to consciences. Lord, only you, only you can cause them to be born again out of that sinful state, born again. We cry out to you, Lord, today. Please, Lord, let there be some magnificent salvations, magnificent like Paul's. 
how the word and the encouragement of all the people of that time when they heard about Paul having total transformation and now serving you. Oh, Father, let that happen all over the world in every country. Bring rulers, bring kings, bring presidents, bring congresses all over the world. Let there be a great outpouring of Holy Spirit, a great outpouring of salvations. You are no respecter of persons, Lord. You brought us, but we don't want to see others perish. We don't want to see them go down to the pit. We want to see them come in and flow with life, born again life, filled with Holy Ghost life, in your body. You are the head. We are the many members of the body. Cause us, Lord, to stir up these gifts and serve you with all our hearts, unafraid, not holding back. Hallelujah to you, Lord. We declare, Lord, we love you so much today. We don't even want to think where we would be without you having come and lifted us out of a selfish, horrible state and brought us into your kingdom. Thank you, Lord. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Be with us all day long, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, let us wait upon the Lord.